This is a special segment of AKT Celebrity Reads. I'm going to try to get this done. Um, if you're not here tonight, that's okay. I know you'll see it tomorrow. I'm going to do a special edition. This is still about Nipsey Hussle, Nipsey the Great, Ermius, beautiful Ermius, Joseph Ashkedom, Nipsey Hussle. And I'm going to do, hello everybody, I'm sorry, it's still not at top capacity. So I'm going to try to get as much as I can. I love the hearts. Thank you. You know, I always love it when you give me hearts. I love, love, love that. I'm going to try to read as much of this. Hey, my Jay. Hey, my sad sister. Hey, Christina. <laughs> hello, everybody. I'm going to deal with... Um, Nipsey Hussle's friend, Cowboy. Uh, as you all know, that's been keeping up with the story. Cowboy has been, I love you too, my Jade. Nipsey's friend, since friend was, since uh, Nipsey was a young boy, he was like his OG. Hi, Sonya. He was like what Thundercat, Big Thundercat, and Nipsey was known as Little Thundercat when they were younger. I don't know everything about them yet, but I'm finding out they were close. Hey, Asia. And uh, I, to be honest with you, I don't want to do this reading. I really do not want to do this reading. It hurts me. Um, if what I am reading is correct and what Nipsey's telling me, this is uh, a very, very painful reading. I've been sitting with this for about a week now and looking at it. I'm still not finished with it. There's so much to it. The last time I came, I think it was uh, August the 14th, a day before Nipsey's birthday, and I was supposed to come back on his birthday, but I was so worn out with so many energy. Who, Christina, what cowboy fascinates you or Nipsey? I was so worn out that uh, I couldn't come back on his birthday, so what I did was a birthday celebration here for him, and I have his altar so I don't want you to think I didn't do anything for him because I really, really love him so much. And I wish he were here. And I know he loves all of his fans. He loves his family and his children. Yeah, that was his, yeah, his homeboy. He was like the, you know, over him at one point. Uh, so I'm going to try to read as much of this as I can because I don't have a full 100 charge on the battery. If I can, I'll hold the battery if I have to hold the phone within the charger. And if I cannot, I'll come back in a couple of days because the, the reading does say, now I don't know if you all can fill me in, let me know. I don't know when the legal proceeding, I heard there may be a legal proceeding with this week, August 28th or 29th. I don't know what that's about. If that's with Tanisha and um, Nipsey's sister and brother, mother, I'm not sure if that's the custody case or if there's another hearing around Nipsey and Eric Holder, uh, so you all let me know. Hey, Duan. <laughs> yes, I am Mrs. X. I am Mrs. Jackie Wilson. Yes, I am his little girl, and I'm so proud of that. Hello, beautiful Ishmael Bay. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me light my cigar. And I want to say to her, because one of my beautiful uh, goddaughters today said that she was watching YouTube, and Brene Reads was doing a live show, and said she said she loved me. So I told her to tell Brene, because I was tied up in the middle of a reading, that I love her too. And she said she told Brene Reese I love her. So I wanted to shout her out now so she'll know that I, I did uh, get that message. Some people I knew heard me and responded. So I love you too, sweetie. I love you, Brene, and I'm so proud of you. I think you're an incredible reader. You're so, so talented. And I see that I do watch yours. I don't watch everybody's, but I do, I do check up on you. I just don't want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> and we do say a lot of things in common. So I see that you are very gifted and talented. And I guess I am too because I see what you see. So hello, Brittany. Hello, beautiful goddess. Thank you for loving me and having respect for me and what I do. And the feeling is absolutely mutual. And I'm going to smoke my cigar. I'm going to just like to smoke for the ancestors and the spirits because it's been a lot of heavy activity uh, in my house. As usual, the, uh, she did? Oh, thank you, Jamila. That is nice because it's a lot of spiritual people doing readings on YouTube. So for her to shout me out, that means a lot to me. So uh, she's absolutely a beautiful spirit, a sweetheart. 
So I'm very honored by her. Oh, really? Well, that means a lot. <laughs> and, you know, some people say, you up there with that ghetto shit, and why you just can't do no reading, why you can't talk, you got the crack jokes and cuts and talk. Hey, I came out like that for people that obviously don't know me, like my people have followed me from day one. I started off, you all didn't see me in 2006, doing vagina power, spiritual sexuality. I started off talking about pussy and dick. It, it ain't, it ain't going to motherfucking change. I spent my whole life, as I've told people at first, being abused and hurt and abandoned and told children to seen and not heard, knocked in the face, knocked in the head, knocked in the mouth, honey, telling me what I can and cannot say. And I lived the first half of my life like that. So now I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do the way I want to do it. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. So if you're offended by me, there are plenty of people that do spiritual readings, honey, on Nipsey and everyone else. So you're more than welcome to go and watch them. But I'm going to do me, baby, until the wheels fall off this motherfucker. Until I decide I don't want to be here no more and I leave this body. As long as I'm not disrespecting or hurting another person. Because I think the last time I checked, this was my video, this was my page. There was my goddamn show, and these my motherfucking readings. So everybody that's rocking with what the fuck I'm doing, live, raw, and in motherfucking living color, then you can stay. Trolls, anybody else, haters, I'm not, I'm not going to change for you. I'm not going to conform for you. Now, your ass will get blocked. But I don't argue about who I am, who I be, where I'm from, what the fuck I do. It's all the way ATL shawty in the dirty motherfucking South, bitch. And that's where the fuck is going to stay. Ain't no shame. I'm a country bitch, a cussing bitch. I mean, but I know how to be polite and politically correct when I have to speak somewhere. For you all that don't know, I spoke at Spelman College when I first started off, probably, what, what, 2007, 2008. I was honored to be invited by one of the sororities to speak at Howard University at 2010. And I spoke in the medical um, department, which was an extreme honor for me. And I didn't use one curse word. I know how to speak when I have to speak. So if you all are too ignorant to see me and the person that I am, fuck you. Okay? Now, I'm going to do my... Hello, Sharon. Grant. Honey, I, I don't been through too much shit in my life, baby. For anybody to, to be my mom and daddy, honey, and tell me what I can and motherfucking can't do. Ain't nobody hitting me in the mouth, the face, none of that no more. That ain't going on over here. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. The way I want to motherfucking do it. Ain't nobody telling me what the fuck to do no motherfucking more. That's right, Alina. Thank you. 33, been following. 33, you're, you're in your master period. You're in your Christ period. You've been following me since 19. That's right. And and you you know me, girl. Ain't nothing changed. I started out raw. I always been the motherfucking saying I had just been sick for the past few years, so I had been out of circulation. Thank God, honey. I got all that swelling and bloating down and shit and got myself back to normal. God gave me another chance to come back and do it over. Now I'm not being ashamed of nothing. I'm not being ashamed of none of my gifts. My father, I'm working on that now. I will try to come back in the next couple of days, but um, I am working on it because my father's ceremony is on September 4th. He will get his Hollywood star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and I'm going to do a tribute to him. Uh, you all will know about it because I'm going to share it with you as usual. It'll be up here. Uh, so I got to work on my voice and stuff. Y'all, that's why I'm not going to smoke this cigar because I got to get the lungs ready. <laughs> hey, Barbara. Anyway, let's get into it because I, don't, I can't see the charge on the phone. I don't know how much time I got. What I will say, like I said, I see legal, uh, I see litigation, I see possible lawsuits coming up for Nipsey's family. I see some people in a group fighting, as well as people individually fighting the group because they are upset they cannot get their way. So I don't know the indiv who all the individuals are. I don't know if one of them is Tanisha. Is she going back and forth with them? Hey, Catherine, say hello to my beautiful baby. Is she going to go with the legal proceeding soon about their beautiful baby, Imani? Or is this just going to be something pertaining to, to Nipsey and the man that's accused of shooting him? But I see lawsuits and litigation coming up soon with groups and with individuals towards the group. And they're not going to end with one hearing overnight. There's going to have to be negotiations, restructuring, reno renegotiations. 
uh, for people to get what they want. There's a lot of infighting in that family that we don't know about and we don't see. There are family members fighting each other, and there are family members coming back together to, to team up, to tag team, to fight someone else. There um, are different groups fighting each other. There have been enemies that are no longer enemies anymore that are deciding to get together and to fight together. They're more powerful together. The enemies like David Gross and them, I see them trying to work with the family, the family trying to work with them. They see that's the only way they can really get this resolved. Uh, because it's enemies and being separately separate, especially since Nipsey did not own all the property and he was a partner. He made David Gross a partner. When they purchased the property, then the family has to negotiate. And I'm seeing Nipsey's very unhappy about this. Look at the libations. Libations to Jackie. It's Ashe. Nipsey Hustle. Ashe. Arias. When I looked at the birthday party, it, Nipsey had mixed feelings about the birthday party. He misses everyone. He misses his mom. He wished that he could be there with everyone uh, at the birthday party. But I'm going to tell you something really, really weird. I'm going to say first, this is for entertainment purposes only. That's all this is. This is a spiritual reading. I'm a spiritualist. And I'm just up here just shooting the shit. You know, don't take what I'm saying seriously. You know, I'm just speaking from what I am seeing on a spiritual level. And what I believe I am seeing and hearing. Hi, Nikki. He is not completely happy. And I'm going to tell you something that seems going to seem really crazy to you and strange. Because it was crazy to me. Nipsey told me that it was bittersweet for him to see them at the party and not be there. Even though they were celebrating him, he was crying. He was there with them. He was walking amongst them. He was saying hello to everybody. He was hugging his mom. He misses his family so much as the babies and hugging them and kissing them. He misses his grandma. It's so much pain because he wants to be here. He wants to be back in his physical body, walking among everybody. However, he is very smart. He's good. He's not in hell. He's not been tormented by any demons. None of that. He's safe. And he's doing a lot of work. He's advanced so much. And he's elevating so much, but he gets to hear more and see more out of the physical body. And he's in his other body. He's in the higher self and he can move. Uh, he's learning how to be like Batman, <laughs> like Batman and Superman. Uh, he can move through walls. He can fly. He can move in different dimensions. Uh, yeah, they said they saw him in green orbs and he was with a, he was with a crew too. He wasn't the only spirit and he wasn't alone. I'm going to tell you, finna say something to you. And like I said, this is just for entertainment. So I probably didn't hear what I'm getting ready to tell you. For some reason, I am seeing Nipsey told me, this is what I heard. There were people involved with his killing that were at that party. I don't know why Nipsey said that. And why he feels that he said there are people walking the streets that had something to do with his killing and that were there. They know what happened. They're not going to go tell the police. Some of them think it's funny and some of them got clout because they did it. And they are. There are spies in Nipsey's family's camp. They are inside. You heard me. This is what he's saying. They are inside of the family. I know that sounds really bad what I'm saying. Family members know what happened to Nipsey and who killed Nipsey. I'm not saying they, all of them that know did this, but they were there. They're not going to tell the police and some of them are trying to get close. And, okay, this is the way I see the way I'm trying to get this, trying to understand it. And like I said, I can't finish it all tonight. It's too much. I have to come back in a couple of days. I'm going to try to come back in a couple of days. Some of these people in Nipsey's family did not, when he was alive in the body, did not get money from him, favors, get their rent paid, bill paid, or anything like that. They were in a part of his family. I don't know if it's the mother's side, the father. I saw different ones that didn't look like him and his brother and his sister. So it be different mixes of people in the family. Africans for Africa, Eritrea, and then people from here with different mixes here. Because I see the mother looks exotic. She's Creole, and 
the, the you know, I think her, that's her mom that we're seeing that spoke uh, on the news and that we saw with her at BET. I think that's Angelique's mom. I don't know if Nipsey's uh, father's mom is here or alive. Like I said, I know this sounds weird. It sounds weird to me. So there are other people in Nipsey's family that feel like they are outsiders and they now want to get fame, money, and recognition from Nipsey's death. They want to try to be closer to his mother, his father, his sister, his brothers, because they want to be in the spotlight and the limelight and get recognition off this man's death. I'm hearing cousin. So I don't know if some of these are cousins or how they are related, but I don't see them being brother and sister. These are people that I don't see as close to Nipsey as they wanted to be to benefit. And I'm telling you, it's sad for me to say what I'm saying, but this is what I think and what I feel and believe that I heard him say. All of these are not relatives or distant relatives. They may be also close to, and these are men. Some of them are females that are hidden, but I'm seeing men stand out. And all of them are not very tall. I saw a kind of short, maybe medium height, brown skin, dark brown skin guy at Nipsey's birthday party. And I saw another one right beside him, short hair cut, but like a little on the top, little kinky light. So his cousin post up, I don't know if that's the one, but this one dog. He not light like Nipsey with no long hair and the pretty hair. It's kind of coarse like. This guy, I, he said he was very upset when he came and told me this. He said there are people around that family and inside of that family that are spying on that family for someone else and a group and some of them are family members that don't love, didn't love Nipsey. They envied him too, were jealous of him. And now they want to get close to the mother and benefit from them for those two reasons, cash, money, and recognition that's all they're trying to do and they're going back and forth taking in and it's not just them it's females doing it too spying and taking information going in the camp stealing information and then going outside of the camp sharing it back and forth i guess they cannot see them or you know what maybe it's just me who else did i see i'm concerned about the grandmother nipsey brought up the grandmother because i feel like some of them have been to the grandmother's house these are not strangers these are people in the family associated. I don't know if they call themselves family members, but I see some of them are. I can feel the blood. Some of them are family members, and they do shit like uh, hustle, sell dope, like thievish, thuggish. But I don't see them hanging with Nipsey. Thank you. Good night, Catherine. I don't see that they did this with him. This a envy. A jealousy there are people in that family and they're arguing they're fighting fighting and they're conspiring to feel like they're getting something that is theirs and it's not theirs it doesn't belong to them so I see that I'm, I hope that they I'm sure they are making sure grandma is safe make sure she has what she needs she's protected because she shouldn't have people even if their family members coming around that cannot be trusted or don't have good intentions for grandma they're just hanging around trying to benefit or hang up under her, thinking that they could get something from I, I don't know. This is really weird what, what I am getting, but I felt like I had to issue this warning. I had to put this out in public because people involved, I'm going to say it again, I'm not taking it back. For some reason, I don't know why I'm saying it. Other people involved with Nipsey shooting that were there, the assassination that knew about this shit, are walking around free discussing it some of them think it's funny now they're trying to see how they can benefit off of this and they've been around that family and and out of that family and he also he mentioned yg he misses yg and he wants yg he said stay dangerous hmm. watch your back still be careful you're not out of danger i'm going to get into cowboy and these are things that I'm going to say, you all, I have to come back on this. I got to really think back on this. I got to talk to Nipsey some more about it. I got to dig deeper to make sure what I'm hearing is correct. About Cowboy, it's really weird. Because when I looked at Cowboy's feelings, Cowboy has a lot of regret. And Cowboy doesn't sleep at night. Cowboy gets high. And I even wonder if he has some type of drinking. He feels a lot of guilt. He feels a lot of pain. He feels a lot of remorse. Uh, he regrets what he's done. 
because he did have something to do with it. Now, I'm not going to say he, he set it up. I don't see that he set it up, but he knows who did it. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. This is, this is how I, I saw it. I'm going to tell you a weird story because it was weird to me. And one of the main things I looked at was the time of Nipsey's death. Um, that's weird to me because they said it happened between, what, 2.53 o'clock California time and 3.30. That's not what, what they say. Okay. So that's weird to me too, but I'm willing to put myself out here and to say this anyway uh, from what I am getting and what, yeah, I'm just going to tell you anyway, it sounds crazy to me. It says, Cowboy, where should I start? Um, it's so goddamn much. It's that he doesn't sleep well. He thinks about his mother. I don't know if his mother's alive, if any, any of you can find out if his mother's alive or not. The mother is around him, and I see his mother. When he grew up, he had problems with the mother and the father, and at some point, they lost respect for him. I didn't really think much of Cowboy, and he's very ashamed of his addictions. And he talks, uh, he mumbles in his sleep, he talks in his sleep, he kind of has nightmares because this is bothering him. What happened to Nipsey? They're supposed to be like his little brother, like his little homie. He actually saw Nipsey as a son, but then it flipped and went the other way. But when he was younger, that's how they saw it. And it says his man, uh, Herman, cowboy, Herman Douglas, is a big liar. He has an attention deficit order, and he will say one thing and mean another. He's very duplicitous, very conflicted. He participated in setting people up before. He participated in robberies. He participated in murders. He participated in spying on people. And he's a sexual demon. He likes men and women. He likes little boys and little girls. Uh, they said he's a very conflicted person. He's easy to be compromised for personal gain. That he never keeps. So basically as soon as he gets things. He's very irresponsible. And he's a big liar. He's not a. He doesn't have a lot of integrity. And he blows money. He blows things. And there's a lot of people that know this about him. And do not have respect for him. Let's say he has a lot of money today. By next week or something. He would have blown it on getting high. On trying to show off. Trying to impress people. He's a very bad addiction problem. It shows he has some health problems. This guy has some health problems, and it's something with his gut and his stomach. So I don't know if he was ever beat up or attacked, or kicked in the stomach, stabbed in the stomach, shot in the stomach. Something happened. There's trauma in the stomach and in the gut. This guy has problems with his gut and with his body and the upper respiratory system and problems with the bones and the joint, like they're achy. And he has a problem sometimes standing up or gets a stiffness because of a lot of things he's done and trauma. Look like he has got his ass beat several times kicked like dropped to the floor ground and beat and kicked why not because he didn't deserve it. he deserved the shit something he had done out of order and a lot of people a lot of gang members and grown men do not respect this man because he's so grimy and because he's an addict and he cannot kick this and he has nothing to show for his life and all the things he stole and people he set up and things he's done oh yeah he's very nasty cannot be trusted and, yeah, so, yeah, I met that by he runs through money and, and, and uh, he will turn on a friend and he prostitutes himself to the highest bidder and he cannot be loyal. He just basically blows through money over and over and over again. This guy is not stable. That's what he's done his whole life because of he allowed himself to be an addiction. And that he's very off balance. Yeah, he has, I saw the regret. I saw the remorse. I saw the double dealing. I saw the cell phone. There's a particular cell phone tower near that store. I don't know how many are there, but there's one that he looked at. And he was looking at to make sure that they didn't get called or they didn't have the phone or the phone was off or the battery was out of the phone. Some of them didn't bring their phones with them, but they participated in the gang assassination and beating of Nipsey Hussle. I am telling you, Nipsey was assaulted. He was not just physically shot. He was assaulted. Uh, physically assaulted, there was an argument, it was confrontation. And... What I'm trying to see if, if you want to know something about Cowboy Sings like you all don't. But I just want to kind of give you an idea, which I'm, I think I'm telling you what you already know. When I looked at his aura, there are dead people walking around Cowboy. There is death on this man. I don't know how long he's going to have or is he going to end up killing himself because of the addiction. He's very, very unhealthy and has some type of disease, some type of disorder in his blood. I'm also picking up... Um, has a problem staying on task, doesn't keep his word 
uh, no morals, but he's also a very lonely person. He's an underachie underachiever, self-defeated. He's a disappointment to himself and his family, and he's lost a lot of money, and he has problems with his sex organs. It looks like the sperm cells are degraded with a bacterial infection, and in the seminal fluid, this guy has something wrong with his body, and it's tied to the sex organs, the prostate, urethra, kidney damage, possible kidney stones, abusive to women, and, and he is showing that he has the blood-borne infection. And it shows that he has these entities following him, like like these dwarfs following him. Um, they're stealing his resources, and they're doing it through the addictions. That's one way they take things from him, these particular demonic entities that are short, like midgets, but they're dwarfs. And he said he thought that he would move towards, he has a deep need for fame. And a secret addiction to be loved by a crowd. He will be tricked and stolen from because of what has happened to Nipsey. And that was one of the reasons why he wanted to do that to Nipsey. Because he wanted fame and fortune. He wanted to be Nipsey. Remember at one point he was a rapper like he was up and coming. And then something happened to him. Or something he did. Committed a crime with someone else. And, and went to jail. And yeah, they're affecting his organs. Plus sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, when he gets high. A lot of his sexual activity... And a lot of things he does, he gets high first. Like when Nipsey was being assassinated, Cowboy was high because he could not do this to his friend, his homeboy, his little homie, sober. So it's saying here, and I know this might sound crazy, but I'm getting ready to do say to you, uh, Cowboy signed some type of confidential agreement in secret that was a legal slash law enforcement to protect his secrets it looked to me cowboy signed something with the police because there's something that they could be possibly holding over his head that he done that they didn't prosecute him for that they know about and it has something to do with something sexual towards children or young people that might be considered minors and children and not adults he did some deviant nasty shit concerning children they know he's a deviant. This man's never going to be healed. He's never going to be changed. Yeah, he deals with women too, but he also deals with men. That's what I'm saying. But he likes kids. He's a predator and he's a deviant with his sexual activity. That is what I'm seeing. And it showed that he was involved with those types of things, prostitution, drugs, and men in prison and in outside of prison. I'm getting this guy is an informant. I, I don't know why, and I get it from two places. He has informed for the police because they're holding something over him. He's afraid he doesn't want to go back to jail. And he's informing for the gang, which is their family. He was going both ways behind Nipsey's back. That's what's so dirty about this. And then he, let me tell you what he was also done in. Let me tell you what the spirits call that place, the marathon, that plaza. They called it the house of ill repute and the house of ill fame. Cowboy has become infamous and gotten fame from the fucked up shit that you did to your friend. And you set your friend and your little brother up to be assassinated with other family members, which would be what? The 60s. They had something to do with this. His family, his homies, they turned on him like hyenas. I'm not saying anybody else didn't have anything to do with it like Bloods or someone else. But his family was the core. Yes, he's a double agent. His family was the core of this. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. Because I could not believe that, and I could be wrong, but I'm telling you, this is what came to me. This is the story. I'm going to tell you the story. And at that marathon, the spirits called the House of Ill Repute. They were dealing with prostitution there. They were dealing with drug dealing there. And they were dealing with setting people up. They were dealing with credit card fraud. And stealing, not just in the plaza, trying to run it through the stores, try to create this criminal enterprise on Nipsey's property and in the store, but around the whole area. I am picking that up in that whole area. There was that type of crime going on dealing with sex, drugs, extortion, and beating. They gave me an example, said Cowboy is the type of person he was set up and some of it, the police would tell him to do to certain white men. Set him up, let him get with a trick, sell some pussy. He don't know that you setting him up with a particular bitch to fuck him, suck his dick, whatever. You film that, you get his information, run them pockets, 
You get that information on him, he don't know. That you know the name, know where they live at, their wife, children, and their motherfucking thing. And then, holler back at them and let them know, remember me? I know you were dealing with this particular, you know, I set you up deal with this particular prostitute, get your dick sucker, whatever, for a few dollars. Well, now, this is what you're going to do for me. If you or This is the amount you're going to give me. They did that to a lot of different people. If you don't, but it, was, it wasn't just regular people. It was certain people in positions of power or political people. You all don't know how dirty this is. I know some of you may think I'm crazy, and that's okay. I'm going to say this stuff anyway. Then he goes to give it to the police. So they can also have some on the motherfucker. That's in a prominent position or important position, lawyer, doctor, something, yes, that, that somebody in politics that they could use for favors later on. They set them up sexually or set them up with little boys or young girls. Cowboy had this shit going on. This is, and he was protected to do it. Why? Because there's particular police. I don't know if they detectives on that level that deal with vice and shit like that. Well, Cowboy's scared to be exposed and to go to prison. He feel like he won't make it out this time. Done got old and fucked up and asshole leaning to the left or getting bust all in it. He don't want to do that. So he's running this thing at that store. And there are other, I'm talking about they, they dealing with stuff like he let at that store and around there and that whole crew, he let murder, robbery, rape, beating for money. To go on, and then he sublet that parking lot in that store behind Nipsey's back. He was getting money to let them gang members, because there was a particular leader. Now, let me tell you something that really bo that bothered me. Cowboy had a separate operation. No, he won't make it out, Sharon. Separate operation going on. I know this might sound crazy to y'all. It didn't sound crazy to me, but I have to fuck say this shit anyway. When Nipsey would go, and Nipsey wasn't around, I don't know whoever was watching Cowboy at that store, but I'm telling you, Cowboy had an agreement with another gang member, a big guy, like a big guy who was there at the assassination and participated in the assassination. A big guy that was brown-skinned light, like, maybe a dark brown light like, with a hair low, a hair ball, muscular like this, a tall guy. There was also a very vicious gang member, that sold dope. So this is the bedtime story I'm going to tell you. This is what I think I see. Okay. Nipsey knew this guy. They all knew each other. And used to run together. And Nipsey let things go on in the past. Or he participated in things in the past. Until, you know, around that stove. And they getting busted and raided. Until, and it was like they was at another place too doing this. These people go way back. But let me tell you something before I finish that story. I am seeing... This assassination has been planned for three months. They have rehearsed and practiced this, but the original idea and the plot for it was six months ago. That's what I'm saying. Something happened six months ago. Around what? That would be September, October, somewhere around now. Something happened with the police, a legal, some type of disagreement. Something happened at the marathon. I don't know. Y'all could tell me. Some kind of trouble went on. Well, they decided to plot Nipsey's assassination six months ago. Baby, this was not no spur of the shit moment shit that happened that day. I'm hearing six months, and then I'm seeing in the past three months, that's when they really got serious. They started going over at that store and around that store. They started choreographing the shit throughout the days that it led up to this. And then something else weird I'm seeing. They're saying it was three. No, I think them niggas was up. About five or six in the goddamn morning, Saturday morning, rehearsing this shit, stayed up late at night, got up again Sunday morning, around five, six o'clock in the goddamn morning. They was up there at that marathon store between nine, ten in the morning. They was all, the niggas was up there with some bitches too, in the car. For some reason, I don't know why I see a car, there's a woman in the car. And they got two children in there. I don't know if Nipsey children was there. But there's a girl that was in the back seat. And she was bigger than the boy. And then there was a small boy. A nigga was with the girl. The lady in the front. But she looked like she didn't quite know she wasn't with it. But the nigga was with it. I'm telling you. 
Eric Holder and that bitch that was in that car driving that wanted to kill Nips, even though she said she didn't, that's a lie. She know what they were coming up with for. That's not the only woman in a car I see with a nigga. This woman, I didn't see her get out. I have to go back and look at it. She was kind of shocked. She knew Nipsey had been up to the mall like they had bought things up at that plaza before. He didn't tell her that they was going for that. This is one of the shooters, one of the gang members that wanted to participate. A young man, when she saw, she saw it. I'm telling you, people saw this, but she didn't know. And I saw two guys around the car. I said, when he got out and he was getting ready to participate, he had a gun. She looked and she was frightened. She said, I don't want to do this. I want to go home. He's like, shut up. And he pulled a gun out. He said, you're going to go along with it. You're going to stay here until we're ready to leave. And then when we go home, you're not going to say, tell the children to bat, sit, get low in the back. They, they didn't know or understand. They're young. You're going to go along with this. And when we get home, you're not going to say anything about this. You're not going to tell anybody you were there what you saw and that you know that I was involved. I know this sounds crazy. I couldn't believe it when I'm seeing this. He stood there in the parking lot, but he was up. A few offices up. Now, and, and then Nipsey was down where he got shot down there. Now, get him back. This guy. This gang member that was a leader over this group of gang members had talked to Cowboy. First, he had gotten into an argument with Nipsey. And Nipsey told him, I don't want you up here with that shit no more. I'm going clean. I'm going legit. I don't want no drug selling. I don't want no more prostitution. I don't want nobody getting robbed over here. I don't want nobody getting beat up over here. I don't want nobody getting killed over here. I, we have to clean it up now. I can get in a lot of trouble. I, I can lose everything I work for. And then this man is like, really, nigga? So we've been family. We done did everything together but died. You, 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 you used to be with it. You used to let us do the shit. Nigga, you was right up with the shit too. Now, you, 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 you family? And you don't want to eat and let us eat, nigga? You don't, you don't want us to eat and benefit? The shit went something like that. You know, you owe us. We family, so now you're too good. What you say to see if anyone has her, her info? Um, you, you're too good for us. You, 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 you're going up. You got all this shit going on. You're hanging with this one and that one. And, you know, you, you're getting things you want your dream come true. And you don't want to make our dream come true. You don't want us to ride up with you. He was like, not doing that. Nigga, this is all the life we know. This is all I want to do. I don't want to do nothing. I can't sing and dance like you and get on your record label and shit. And, and fuck it, nigga, I don't want to do that. I like doing what I do the way it is. We need to keep this the way that it is. And now you don't want me to eat. You eating and got everything you wanted. And now you, you want to leave. That's what you planning on doing? Going away. No, I want you owe me. You owe us. You're going to let us do this. He said, no, this what he do. When Nipsey goes and he's not there all the time, Cowboy made an agreement, and I said subletting because it wasn't his to, to, to lease. He's supposed to be the manager running the store. The nigga goes to Cowboy. Cowboy weak and Cowboy scared of him. You know, because he done got old and broke down and shit. These niggas, some hot young niggas, and they young, and he know they don't mind killing. That's what this nigga likes to do. This big one that I see that I also saw in Nipsey's store. This big nigga with his hair ball all low. Husky like this here. Hot head. Very vicious, very violent. And he comes to Cowboy and said, what the fuck wrong with this nigga? Look, if you can't talk him into it, you're going to let us run it when Nipsey's not here. And then Cowboy, uh, well, uh, he give Cowboy some dope. So, you know, Cowboy is real flexible at this point. That's all you got to do for him to get him a few goddamn dollars. But Cowboy's nervous. Cowboy's afraid to say no. He feels like he has to say yes because he's like, nigga, I'll kill you too. And then Nipsey, that's what I'm seeing that's kind of surprising me. Nipsey comes down on Cowboy and actually like someone was talking about him fired or getting rid of him. If you keep bringing this problem to me and trouble to me, then Cowboy, you can't stay here and keep letting this shit go on because Nipsey didn't trust Cowboy. He got to the point he did not trust Cowboy. He did not tell and I've said it at the beginning in April. There 
there were cameras in there and the way things were set up, Cowboy and them didn't know where all of them were or where they were set up at or who was watching or the back door in those cameras. All right, you can go back and do you think I'm lying. Look at what I said the first time I did a video. It was a few days after Nipsey died. I said that, just like I said about the two guns and the two shooters, and that it was blood in the goddamn stove. All that shit didn't happen outside. I don't believe all of it happened outside. We're going to get to that in a minute, okay? Nipsey puts pressure on Cowboy and says, I'm not having it. The other nigga puts pressure on Cowboy. Cowboy's scared of him and scared to say no. Because the guy, I heard him say some funny shit tonight. Looks like the nigga said, if you don't let me do it, since Nipsey ain't gonna, this nigga, he ain't gonna let me do it. He don't want to cooperate because he, he think he's so special. He's too motherfucking good. I will shoot this motherfucker up and I will burn this motherfucker down. That's what I heard. He said, either way, you're going to do it. So if he don't do it, I'll kill you. I'll kill him. I will shoot this fucker up. I will tear it down. I will destroy it. What you going to do now, nigga? What you going to do? Because he knew that Cowboy was scared of him. Cowboy's caught between a rock and a hard place. Cowboy has let this go on. Cowboy let that shit go on because he was scared of him. And he was nervous. So he was pinned in. But they both of them. Nipsey said no. The nigga said no. So they jamming him up, Nick Cowboy, from what I'm seeing, Lord have mercy, I could be getting this wrong, but Cowboy went along with this secret operation. I see this guy, I saw a boat or something on water where there was drug supplies coming in, and this guy wanted them, but he had gotten angry too because he couldn't pay for all of them because Nipsey was coming down on him and coming down on Cowboy about getting rid of all that dirty shit. And then I saw something about, what was it, earlier this year? Uh, was it earlier this year and last year, just earlier this year, where they got a letter from, what was it, the DNA? Uh, the, excuse me, I'm talking about DNA. I'm going to get to that in a minute. The district attorney, the lady. Uh, I had written it down. I got so much paper, y'all. I'm sure y'all know who I'm talking about, the lady DA, where they wanted to uh, David Gross to evict uh, the marathon, and I'm now seeing that is why that has something to do with it. And I will also say that Nipsey was not killed at three o'clock and three thirty. At Lord, y'all, I don't know why I'm saying this. It looked like there was something frozen in time. He was shot at one time. That body was dragged in and wiped off. It was cleaned off. They must have cleaned off the outside as well. And they had him held. They pulled him in, had him held, and put him back out. I know that sounds crazy, but I see he was in, and the, the, the confrontation went on. In, the shit jumped off on the inside. The shit didn't jump off on the outside. And at first, I keep people talking about people talking about the barbershop. And I thought when I said I saw a building, one part of that building on the end with a pyramid on top looked like a pyramid on the roof. Uh, somebody emailed me and said it was a barbershop. That's not true. The barbershop's not on the end of the store like I thought, and I remember everything was turned backwards. You know what else? You know what's on the end? Have mercy, Master Burger. Master, that was called Master Burger, has the pyramid up on the top of the roof, kind of sitting back off the roof. I saw a picture of Master Burger. And when I went to look at the Master Burger, I saw blood and DNA on the floor. I even saw splattered pieces, small pieces of brain matter on the Master Burger floor. And saw somebody tracking it out, walking out of the door on the sidewalk and saw blood, old blood and DNA. I'm not saying it's Nipsey. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying... There's been shootings and murder in that area, like right there at that store, possibly in that store. And then I saw people tracking it out, the blood and the DNA on the floor coming out on the front and then going around the side to a dumpster. So I don't know. You have to tell me if there's a dumpster on one side of this building or the side where the Master Burger is. And I see blood and DNA in like somebody's clothes or they dump something or maybe someone at some time inside of the dumpster. And then I go around the side of the dumpster and behind it and I see someone dead. So it looks like there have been 
bodies, several bodies. There were dead bodies I saw right there by the dumpster on the side, behind the dumpster. I saw violence and someone shooting, crying. I don't know if someone was killed in there. But it, for some reason, I saw the blood and the brain and body tissue and the master burger coming out in the front of it going around to the side so you all have to tell me what's on the side of the master burger since i saw that pyramid there on the top of there it goes around on the side i see a dumpster and i see bodies i believe somebody's been killed there I'm not saying that's where Nipsey was. I'm just saying other people. I see bodies all around this plaza. I even see some across the street. Somebody has been killed around that building in the back, in the sides, and across the street. When I looked at the store, I just started drawing the diagram. Something really weird happened. I started seeing people come out from everywhere, so I started to draw the people on the paper. I saw there's a side here. You have to tell me where's a side, like a store, a gas station with a wall and a fence and a bush. Somebody was behind there on the bush squatting, eating a sandwich. Somebody was behind the store, uh, looked like cowboy. Somebody had brought them a hamburger. So it made me think when he said he went to the back to take his hamburger. I don't know if he really took it to sit it for himself or someone else. That had been waiting in the store. I know this sounds weird. But this is before Nipsey got there and this happened. Somebody was waiting in the back. Cowboy took that hamburger back there. And I don't. I'm really wondering was it for him. Okay so the first person I want to say to you. I don't care what anybody's saying. I'm saying that about that master burger place. They was in there plotting on Nipsey. In the master burger place. Some of the shooters. And the people that cover, now that I've got to see it myself, and not listen to nobody, so let me listen to this, watch this shit myself. I looked at that Master Burger place, and I seen the niggas in there. For some reason, I see a woman involved in this. Not, not the one that was with Erica, so another one. Two or three of them that was also affiliated with the gang of gang members they sell. I seen it, and so it's at that I had to tell y'all that because I never said it before because I never seen it. But when I seen that, seen that pyramid, I looked down, I started seeing blood on the floor from a lot of folks. And then I even seen somebody associated with this that's involved, that's a hemophiliac, have hemophiliac A. Somebody got a blood problem. I don't know why I keep coming up about the different blood type, like I say to you about the other person. What I said about them, they had RH negative factor, so I knew it was a white person. Because that's where that type is most prevalent. In the United States, 15% of the population has RH negative. And more people have RH positive. So that's rare. And it's with the European group. But it can be in all groups based on the race mixing. And I also keep getting Asian. I keep getting an Asian person involved in this murder. I see an Asian person on that property. They were there before the murder. And they were there the day of. And I'm wondering, are there any businesses... Are there any Asian-run businesses or any people that are Asian that work in any of those shops in the Marathon Plaza? Because I see an Asian female getting on the phone. And I see an Asian man creeping up in the middle of this. And I know that sounds crazy because y'all didn't see him. I didn't see him, but I can see him. He was in the middle of all of this mayhem that came up. Okay. Here, Master Burger, come down. They sitting there. They plotting. They getting ready. They looking down. Some nickels in the T-Mobile. I have never, I've told y'all from day one. I said in the first reading in April, I've never been able to shake the marathon and the T-Mobile mirror. That glass that looks like a mirror. Someone was in there. I see it's a little cut or a little corner. Right there on the side before you get to the marathon. Some niggas was right there. I haven't seen some more crazy shit. I seen two niggas that look like Eric Holder. I said, does Eric have a twin? 
It was two niggas up there. I know that sounds crazy to y'all. It was two niggas. That looked like Eric Holder ass. It was some tricky shit here. I seen them twins there, and I know he probably ain't got no twin. To make the decoy. To mix it up. It was some niggas under the car. I seen a nigga laying. No, I seen about two or three. But you can't see them in the tape. But I seen them in the spirit. Down. Under some of them cars. Laid down. So when Nipsey was out. Came outside. They was under there. See him, but he couldn't see them. If they wanted to, they can hit him up under the goddamn car. I know how men I seen. I know what they look like. But to Rama, I already talked too goddamn much, so I'm going to keep that to myself. During that time, you had decoys out there. And when the shooting was going on, the tape fake. They don't know. Let me tell you something, and I've watched other people that think the same thing. For some reason, like I told you the last time, when Nipsey said, go look at my video again, some of the stuff the mama said, like the crescent shape, or the clothes when the crescent shape, and then he said, I put a crescent shape in your head, nigga, and he did his gun and shit. I looked at that video. The video, if you go back and look at it, it looks like a drive-by. It's taking place in the higher and higher video with DJ Khaled and John Legend playing the piano. It looks like some of the same thing is going on in that music video that is going on in the tape, that little bitty piece of tape, because we know it's a whole bunch more tape that you cannot see, and it looked like that tape was layered on top of the other. That tape's not real. It is what, what did the spirits tell me? They gave me the names of what they are calling. They're calling this. It's a flea flicker. You look at football, look up flea flicker. It's a trick play. That was a trick tape. What is, was it Master Burger? Not one. Okay. It's a trick tape. And then you're dealing with, when it came up, 